Right now, at an FBI lab in Delaware County, forensic experts are sorting through over a million photographs to see if they can identify any more victims in one of the biggest child porn busts in U.S. history. It was a teenage victim with the courage to come forward who helped the FBI crack the case. And now, in a CBS3 exclusive, the young woman investigators are calling a hero talks about her years in darkness and her decision to break her silence. One of the most horrific child pornography. The headlines were sensational. Indictments against three people in Delaware. John Warman behind bars on $4 million. Covered more than 1 million images. The details unfathomable. Sexually explicit videos. Crying, kids hollering, kids screaming. Three of the children that Warman forced sex upon were infants. Infants, infants. But to the brave young woman who helped the FBI crack the case, it was all very personal. I have nightmares all the time. I wake up crying all the time. We are simply calling her Elizabeth. Her string of nightmares started when she was three years old and her father died. After several foster homes, her mother reclaimed her and put her into the arms of John Warman. Mom lived somewhere else and rarely stopped by. Warman put nine-year-old Elizabeth, her 11-year-old sister, and six-year-old brother in the basement of his Colwyn home. The girls got a bunk bed. The little boy slept on the floor inside a makeshift box. Me and my sister had to screw him in every night. He had no way of getting out of there. And if he had to go to the bathroom during the night? He had to go to the bathroom inside of the milk carton. And it had to be emptied every week when it was full. That's how my brother lived. Elizabeth says the basement was dark and grim. The only room with a door, Norman's bedroom. Inside was a bed, a computer, and a camera. Whenever we walked inside of his room, we had I always had full clothes on. Sometimes he would sit there and tell me, okay, well, pull my pants down. He would take a picture. Okay, well, lift up my shirt. He would take a picture. Okay, well, turn around. He would take a picture. When Elizabeth turned 10, she says the pictures weren't enough. When it started out, he just had me do the oral. Within a year, Elizabeth says she was forced to do much more, and all on videotape. How often, like during a week, did he have sex with you? Seven days in a week, most likely four days out the week. It was always, it was constant. It was always constant. Elizabeth says she was never allowed to play with other kids. She was never allowed to use the phone. Anything she was allowed to do, she had to earn it. I wanted to go outside and ride my bikes across the street. Had to do something first. If I wanted to go out with Grandma on the weekends, had to do something first. Something sexual. Yes. He had to get his before we got ours. And if I ever refused, he would just start beating on my younger brother for no reason. Did your stepfather ever threaten to kill you? Yes. He sat there and said, if I ever said anything, we got into a big argument. And I sat there and said, I'm telling. I'm telling everybody. But he used to drag me right back down them basement steps. He actually sat there and said that he would kill me if I said anything. And from then on, I wasn't going to open up my mouth. For eight years, Elizabeth went to school every day, and she never let on about the horror at home. When Elizabeth was 15, Worman and the kids moved in with this woman, Conchetta Jackson. She had three young daughters of her own living in her Collingdale home. And according to the FBI, Conchetta advertised a daycare service so that parents would bring more children to Worman and his cameras. She had sat there and told me one time she had a hole inside of her wall and it was facing into the bathroom. And I said, why is the hole there? And she said, well, there's a camera in there. At 16, Elizabeth finally broke away from Warman. She was told she was no longer part of the family. I wasn't allowed to email nobody, call, nothing, unless I still pleased him. And that wasn't going to happen anymore. So for the next two years, Elizabeth lived at a friend's house, went to school every day, and didn't say a word until the day the case broke wide open. The breaking point was when I was told from another person involved in the case that my younger brother was being videotaped. And I knew what happened during my videotapes, and I don't want the same exact thing to happen to him. So you assumed he was being sexually assaulted? Mm-hmm. That's exactly what the person told me. Elizabeth told a counselor at school who called the police, who called the FBI, and together they busted one of the biggest child porn cases in history. The FBI found over a million photographs of 12 children. John Werman is now in federal prison on $4 million bail. Conchetta Jackson is under house arrest. And Elizabeth's mother is also in federal prison, charged with helping Werman take pictures of the other children. And a lot of people sit there and say, you're a hero. I understand that. 
But when it, I'm a hero and I saved 12 girls, but now what about my mom? It is a story with a hero, but no happy ending. Elizabeth lost a father, now a mother, and worst of all, she lost her childhood. I never felt like I was loved. That's all I ever wanted. I just wanted to be loved. Elizabeth agreed to talk with me because she knows there are teenagers and adolescents out there living the life she lived in an abusive household and afraid to come forward. She wants those kids to learn from her story. Her message, tell someone. It never gets better. And you may save someone else from the same fate. If you're a child that needs help or an adult who suspects something, the number for the National Child Abuse Hotline is 1-800-422-4453. That's 1-800-422-4453. There is also information on our website at cbs3.com. And tonight we have new information as we continue to cover the case that made national headlines. In Colwyn, a quiet suburban neighborhood inside a modest home, something unspeakable was happening in the basement. Sometimes he would sit there and tell me, okay, well, pull my pants down. He would take a picture. Okay, well, lift up my shirt. He would take a picture. Okay, we'll turn around. He would take a picture. We are calling her Elizabeth. I have nightmares all the time. The teenager who came forward and helped the FBI crack one of the biggest child porn cases in U.S. history. They say the man taking the pictures was 39-year-old John Warman. Agents found over a million photographs. There was also video of Warman having sex with the children, including Elizabeth, starting when she was 10 years old. I used to scream it all the time. You're not my dad. You're not my dad. I used to sometimes run out of the front door. I used to get pulled back in, and I used to get sat on. I have very bad asthma. He used to stare up asthma attacks sitting on me. No kid should ever have to go through that. Warman is now in federal prison and will stay there for the rest of his life if found guilty. But so many questions remain. How did Elizabeth end up in the clutches of John Warman? CYS should have came and checked up on us. It's, it's upsetting because to me, it feels like no one really cared about us. CYS is Delaware County Youth Services, and they have a history with Elizabeth. She was three when her father died in 1991, and CYS put her and her brother and sister in foster homes. Four years later, her mother, Dorothy Prodzik, asked for and got the children back and put them in the hands of Warman. Mom lives somewhere else, and no one checked the living arrangements. I thought that's what you were supposed to do. The second a child comes out of foster care, okay, wherever they're going, at least check and make sure everything's okay. If CYS had checked the Colwyn house, they would have found that the children were with Werman and that he had no legal custody. Just this, a handwritten notarized letter saying Prodzik was giving the three children to Werman for a while. We showed the letter to the Delaware County DA. Can you just write up a document like this, get it notarized, and hand over your kids? You cannot. Uh, I'm not certain why that document was made. And again, that's part of our ongoing investigation. Investigators think that Prodzik may have taken the kids out of foster care to get to the federal money that was due them after their father's death. Do you have information that the mother basically sold these kids for the Social Security money? I am aware of that allegation. As the DA's investigation continues, there is a growing call for a change in the system. I can't even begin to tell you how angry. State Senator Anthony Williams is as sickened by the story as you are and wants to hold hearings in Harrisburg to look into the case and hire more social workers. I think what public hearings would do is highlight where the state can come out, come in and give the county some help and assistance. So there may be some good that comes out of all this. But right now, yeah. it is difficult for Elizabeth to see any good at all. My father passed. That's not good. I was put into foster care. That's not good. I was raped. That's not good. What do I have to say good from my childhood? Elizabeth has a new personal tragedy to add to that list. Investigators believe her mother not only helped Warman take some of the pictures, but joined in on the sex act with one of the children. That is why bail has been revoked. Are you going to be okay? I'm going to be okay. It doesn't matter what happens. She is only 19, and you don't know where she gets her strength as she tries to leave the darkness of her past. I just want everything to end. It's been long enough.